Hello programmers, welcome back. So I wanted to make sure that we continued on with some of the work that we talked about in our workshop and there are just a few more things that I wanted us to kind of hold on to uh, in our back pocket as we think about some of the lessons that we learned over the course of the two days that we got to share with one another. So we're going to take a look at what we talked about in terms of advanced rendering. And we didn't do any kind of crazy advanced rendering, uh, but we did talk about a technique uh, that I really like and that's extremely powerful in Touch Designer, and that's called instancing. And the way that instancing really works is it'll, it allows us to use a single piece of geometry and then pass that information over to the GPU and make multiple copies of it. So we looked at the copy shop, for example, and saw uh, some of the neat things that it could do. But instancing is really like a very fast and exciting way for us to do that on the GPU. So in order for us to really understand the kind of uh, essential ingredients that are happening there, we're going to break this down into the very smallest kinds of pieces that we possibly can. So we're going to start by setting up just a regular kind of uh, render network. So we need a geometry, we need a camera, we're going to go ahead and use a piece of, we're going to go ahead and use a light. So we need all of our essential ingredients here. We also, while we're at it, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we are rendering this because we wanna be able to look at it. So we're gonna add a render top. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and attach this to a null. And now uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda of look at some of this concept a little bit uh, and we're gonna try and pull it apart from its kind of most fundamental pieces. So we're gonna do this in a slightly painful way to get started, so I apologize for that. We're gonna look at much faster, more efficient ways to kind of handle it once we get going here in a second. Uh, but we have to really kind of step this back for us to understand what's really going on here. Before we get too much further, I wanna get rid of this torus and I wanna just add a, a box instead. Um, Cause that's like a little less cumbersome in my opinion. You can leave it a torus if you want. It's up to you. Uh, I also want to turn down the scale of this just a little bit because it will be easier to see something that's, say, not 0.5 instead of the full unit size. Okay. So, here we go. So far, so good. We need a few other things to really kind of get rolling here. And we're going to start with a table. Um, and in this table, we're going to use this table to describe the position of all of our instances. We'll see what that looks like a little bit more clearly here in a second. Um, but we're going to go ahead and attach a null to get started. And then we're also going to go ahead and convert this to chops. And we'll actually fill this in here more in one second. I know this is like, it's hard to kind of understand what's going on here. It's pretty abstract at the moment, but just stick with me. We're going to add a couple of columns, and I'm doing that by right-clicking and saying Add After, and we're going to add a few more rows. So we're going to go ahead and treat this first row as our header. This is going to describe um, all of the kind of information, right? This will be like our chop name, our channel names. So I'm going to call one index, then TX, TY, TZ. And we're going to leave this last one blank for right now. We might actually just call it Rx. What the heck? Let's just go ahead and plug all these in here. Rx, Ry, Rz. We're going to come back to these. So my index value is going to start at 0. I've got 0. I've got 1. I want to put 1 instance in negative 1, Tx, 0, and 0. And then 1 in positive 1, Tx, 0, zero. Okay. Let's take a look at our dat2 to make sure this is all moving over the way that we expect it to. We don't want a channel per row, we want a channel per column. The first row is going to be names and the first column is going to be values. I'm going to go ahead and just scoot this over just a tiny bit and then I'm going to attach this to a null chop here at the end. So now here in my Geo, what I need to do is I need to go to the Instance page. I need to turn on Instancing, and then I'm going to drag this Null 3 right into my Instance Chop. Now we'll see that I know some things are showing up for me right out the gate. That's great. And what I need to do here 
uh, on the bottom part of this page is describe which or how my channels correspond to all of my translations. So TX, I want to be TX. TY is TY. TZ is TZ. RX is going to be RX. RY, RZ. Okay. So, you know, what's, what's going on here? Well, what we've got now is we're essentially now able to describe the position of a copied piece of geometry um, by filling out this table. So let's go ahead and add another one here. And you'll see I added another row and it showed up right at zero, zero. Well, you know, what gives? Why is that? It's because what's kind of going on here behind the scenes is that those blank values are going to be interpreted when they're converted into channel information as zeros. And so there's a new instance, but its default location ends up being just the origin. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in zero TX. In this case, I might want it to go to not 0.5 TY, excuse me, 0 0.5 TY. And then I'm going to go ahead and leave it at zero TZ. And let's add another, right? Because we're just kind of on a roll here, negative 0 0.5. Zero, right? So at this point, we could see that, well, we could probably go ahead and do things like put in rotations as well, right? These are other attributes that we kind of configured this for us to be able to alter. And that's really like, it's a pretty incredibly powerful thing. 